everybody. This is Tracy Hickman, and once again, not at Mythos Games. Uh, yep, it uh, turns out that we're moving into the summertime. And the summertime is a time when everybody is uh, pretty busy. And um, uh, it was just impossible for us to get everybody together this evening. Uh, everybody had uh, a lot of other things going on tonight. Um, which, uh, interesting enough, I guess, includes uh, Laura and I. Um, we, uh, we've been very busy um, working here on... Uh, uh, I've been, of course, working for The Void. And hello, Deja Vu. Welcome. Um, I've, uh, I've been working uh, at The Void, of course, and helping them to uh, get restarted. Dragon Knight, hi. Yes, life is life is indeed happening once again. Um, uh, as I said, I've been working the void uh, very hard. Also, been working very very hard on uh, on uh, Sky Raiders, uh, working through the cultures actually for the player's handbook this week. Uh, that's been a lot of work to get done, uh, and uh, um, uh, and of course, we've also been um, working very hard on uh, getting uh, getting our book. Um, probably remember this one. Um, getting this book ready for to uh, for its big debut here come uh, August, um, when uh, it'll be coming out. Um, it's been uh, um, not only that. Uh, not only have we been working on that book, but we've also been working very, very hard uh, to, at last, finish our Dragon's Bard series. Um, uh, Dragon's Bard... Um, um, uh, Dragon's Bard is, uh, uh, is our self-publishing uh, exclusive... Um, series that we've been trying to get finished now, I believe, for over a decade. Um, but we finally got the books to press, and uh, the books are now, uh, we thought they were uh, being printed, um, only to discover that they emailed me back and said that I had provided them with um, the wrong format for the covers, and that the stamp format was, in fact, uh, too big. So um, that <laughs> that being the case, um, I had to redo the cover and uh, redo the uh, spine stamp uh, for the book. Sent all of that in, and then I got notice again today that in fact the ones that I had sent in were the wrong ones, and so I had to redo those again today. And hopefully we have gotten it all right at this point, and those books can finally and at last go. Uh, get in print, and as soon as we have them, we'll be able to fulfill um, fulfill our uh, our way too long commitment to our readers to uh, get that final book in that series to them. Um, so, I, but I am very excited uh, to get those done and and to finish up that uh, that very interesting process. Hello, Byron. It's good to see you here with us again. We've um, uh we've actually spent part of our week uh this week um speaking with uh the with our publisher uh random house um uh and uh penguin random house uh and uh with a, our bookseller that will be selling our books at the Gen Con convention uh in Indianapolis uh the, the early in August first week in August I believe it is um, and, and our agents, of course, uh, with Margaret and myself, um, we have a actually a, a really exciting event that we're doing uh, the uh, first thing in the morning on the opening of Gen Con. Um, we have uh, uh, we have an event where we're doing an unboxing event at the convention, and um, everyone who has a ticket to the unboxing event. Everyone's paying uh, the the price actually of our of the book is included in the price of the ticket, so everyone who comes first thing in the morning gets a first edition hardback copy, as as part of their uh, ticket price, and uh, also something very special, uh, additional commemorative item 
um, that we're going to be uh, giving away. We uh, we initially thought we were going to uh, have 300 um, spaces available for that, um, but the response was so immediate and so fast that uh, they were able to um, to uh, open it up a little bit for us, and so we went from 300 to 500, and now all of those have been sold. So um, first thing in the morning uh, on Thursday morning. Um, uh, those 500 very fortunate, I think, people at this point uh, uh, will be coming to our seminar. Margaret Weiss will be there. I will be there. Um, um, I think uh, some uh, good friends of ours actually uh, are supposed to be there as well. And we're going to have a little party uh, with everybody getting their book uh, immediately. Um, and uh, we'll do some Q&A with Margaret and... Uh, and I think maybe we'll probably read from the book uh, as well uh, for everybody that's in attendance there. And of course, we'll be signing everybody's books afterwards uh, in the dealer's room. So it's going to be a real party that we're going to be having at uh, first thing in the morning, uh, Thursday morning at Gen Con. Um, uh, but, you know, if, uh, if you're interested, you can uh, always go to uh, GenCon.com and take a look. Um, uh, occasionally people of course have to drop out for one reason or another and uh, if you happen to be in Indianapolis that day and uh, at the convention and uh, something uh, something opens up we'd love to see you there of course we will also be selling the book at the convention um, while we're there and signing the books for everybody that's uh, everybody that we can um, there was some question actually as to how many books we should bring so um, we're, we'll we'll see what uh, what happens on that first day. Um, we also um, uh, Laura and I will also be attending um, uh, Emerald City Comic Con in uh, Seattle area uh, later in that same month, and then um, I believe we're scheduled also to go to um, Dragon Con in Atlanta. Um, uh, uh, at the end of August and first part of September. Um, very exciting too for us is that we've, uh, Laura and I have also been invited to attend the Luca convention in um, uh, Luca, Italy, uh, which is a convention that we've attended before and which we loved very much um, uh, to, uh, to go to. So, uh, gosh, there's an awful lot that's going on right now. And, of course, in, throughout all of this, we're still working very hard on getting Dragon, uh, or, or getting uh, Sky Raiders of Abarox, uh, um ready to go to print as well. We've had some great developments uh, there, actually. Um, we're, uh, uh, we're working with a, a, a wonderful online group. Uh, online uh, web-based uh, company um, that we'll be telling you about uh, later. I think I've mentioned this before, and um, uh, it's uh, that part has become very exciting for me because I th it's going to provide some capabilities for you uh, in Sky Raiders that uh, wouldn't be possible otherwise. Um, uh, so, so that's kind of the news that uh, of of what we've been working on um, here. This is um, this is our this is uh, the current uh, version that I have been working with of Sky Raiders, and um, uh, of course I like uh, I like to lay things out kind of as I go. Here's. Uh, quick peek at uh, some of the legendary characters in our uh, in our game and um, uh, I'm, I'm very excited to see that we can get this uh, all uh, get this all built and and in your hands here um, it like I say it's been a busy time but we're working very very hard to get this to press um, uh, updates as far as the cover of the uh, DM and GM book. Um, well, golly, let's see. Um, 
Um, just, um, well, I'll, I will show you this. Uh, you can't necessarily see it terribly well, but uh, this is the, a black and white version of uh, Matt Stowicki's uh, player's cover. Um, we'll be uh, hopefully we'll be sharing that pretty soon, actually, on our with our Kickstarter people. And I've been uh, uh, and yet yeah, with uh, uh, online through our updates. Um, hello, Kari. Welcome, welcome, uh, and, and glad you're joining us here this evening. Um, uh, we will be uh, sh uh, showing off the cover, the Matt Stowicki cover here, uh, pretty uh, pretty soon, online. And um, uh, I, in fact, I got I keep getting calls uh, from Larry Elmore, uh, emails and calls from Larry Elmore, wanting clarification. And so I've been speaking on the phone with uh, Larry Elmore quite a bit this week, uh, last couple of weeks, to uh, help him uh, uh, with uh, with the cover and to make the cover great. Um, that we'll be using his cover, I believe, on the uh, uh, Game Master's book. Um, and uh, and I love the fact that Larry is so careful about what he makes that that it be authentic to what we're building. Um, but at the same time, I'm I, I, I'm I'm uh, I, I'm hum both humbled and um, delighted. Um, he keeps telling me that. Uh, this cover that he's working on for us is his very last commission. That it's the last thing that he's doing as a commission painting. Um, and uh, he said uh, he's just gotten to the point in his life where he's at that age where he'd like to just paint his own things. And um, but that he was willing to do one last commission for us and for this series. Um, uh, really. Uh, uh, like I say, it, it, it delights and humbles me that he would do that for us. Very excited to see his sketches uh, that will be coming soon, and hopefully we'll be able to share those with you as well. Uh, Kari, as far as um, uh, coming to uh, Toronto, I would love to come to Toronto Comic Con. And uh, I'd love to uh, come and uh, uh, meet our good friends up there. And... Um, uh, uh, and uh, uh, talk talk books, talk worlds, talk story, um, and so certainly if uh, if there's an interest in that, I'd I'd love to uh, I'd love to hear from them. Um, uh, as a matter of fact, I believe that Larry, uh, we do have, in fact, I think some uh, uh, some interest in in creating prints of both of the covers. I love Matt's cover, and uh, I, I'm very excited, of course, to see what Larry comes up with. So I'm, uh, um, so I'm hoping we can share prints of that uh, as well. We certainly want some poster art, uh, and I think some of that is, in in fact, part of the Kickstarter um, uh, rewards that we did, and levels of uh, levels of rewards that we did. Um, in fact, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, that. Um, we do have a page that's up uh, um, uh, the, uh, where you can actually go and uh, uh, join us and, and uh, uh, pre-order, uh, uh, join the pre-order for uh, supporting the books. Um, if I can find that, I'll try to put it in the um, in the notes. Uh, underneath uh, our uh, underneath our video feed, uh, so that you'll be able to find that too if you're interested in joining us and in this really amazing adventure that that is uh, Sky Raiders. Uh, Deja Vu wants to know: Would an airship be faster than a typical sea ship from the Age of Sail? Um, I'm not sure that it would be all that much faster because a, a lot of the principles of the aero ships are very much along the lines of uh, of the seagoing vessels. Um, uh, uh, for the ship to move through the sky, it, it actually does have to, uh, the keel has to work against something. And so the, the keel is designed to drag against the flow of aether in the, wor in the air um, to keep the ship moving uh, uh, by sail and to make the ships maneuverable by sail. 
Um, so, uh, um, uh, so I'm not sure that they would necessarily be that much faster than the ships of the Age of Sail. They certainly handle about the same as the ships in the Age of Sail, uh, although there are uh, obviously some magical factors that are involved. Um, are there upper limits to how high the ships can sail? Mostly those are human factors. Um, it's uh, It becomes uh, a, an issue of how cold do you want to be and how high can you go and still breathe. Um, so there are some limiting factors in terms of, uh, of that. Plus there are certain limiting factors in terms of the flow of aether around the world and uh, the sylph that interacts with it. Um, Oh, you're welcome, Deja Vu. Happy to answer. Uh, happy to answer those questions, um, uh, especially because in answering the, those questions for you, it answers a lot of questions for us uh, for us here on our end as well. Um, just as a, uh, a little side note uh, here for a minute, um, uh, we here in the, here in the uh, here in the United States. We have uh, we celebrate uh, Father's Day, and uh, we celebrated Father's Day. We also, of course, celebrate Mother's Day. Um, uh, we also just uh, celebrated Juneteenth. So I mean, we have a lot of celebrations. Anyway, um, I, I guess we're a party nation. I don't know. Anyway, um, uh, we had Father's Day, and uh, and uh, and you know, Father's Day traditionally, you know. That, you get dad, I don't know, a tie, a, you know, lawnmower, I, I don't know, power tools, I, I, um, I don't know, something that would typify dad. But my family, of course, being my family, knows that if you're going to give this guy something for Father's Day, that you'd better give him something like this. So, I, of course, I got a game for Father's Day. And not just any game, it has to be a Fantasy Flight game, and of course it has to be a game that's in a really fat box, and it has to be a game that is like filled with all kinds of toys, and, and that will, and it should take way too long to play. So, that was one of my Father's Day gifts. And um, my, uh, yes, Star Wars, Star Wars Rebellion, um, and... Of course, because to me, it's not enough that I just have a, a giant thing. Hello, Linda. Welcome. Thanks for joining us tonight. We were just talking about my Father's Day game gifts. So not only do I have my Star Wars Rebellion now, my great big game, but now, of course, this means that I get to go through all of the setup that that is needful for me, which means, of course, that I have to get covers slip cases for all of the cards because we wouldn't want them you know damaged have, have yeah I don't know uh, chicken grease on them whatever that is and then um, um, and then uh, oh and then extremely important my wife knowing that dads need like some sort of crafty craft thing to do. She, of course, got me three reels of uh, PLA for my 3D printer, so, which is my version of craft stuff. So, um, as you can see, um, let's see, as you can see here, uh, I, I am putting to good use um my uh my brand new really beautiful uh spool of this really lustrous dark, uh, blue um uh um uh, uh craft making of course a game tray specifically for to to use with the game that I'm because I need to of course also make game trays for everything inserts for everything because that's what we got. Um Deja would like to know um are, are am I going to print one of my airships? 
Oh, you betcha. I'm going to be making an airship. Oh, yeah, for sure. I've, in fact, just today, just today, um, I saw from Kim Bori, who's been doing the modeling on the airships, she finished um, the printable airship today. Um, she was very, very excited about it, in fact, because she had constructed it in such a way that it didn't require any supports. It's in a minimum of pieces, but all of the pieces are held together um, with uh, magnets. And so you'll be able to take it easily take it apart and then just, you know, put it back together again for, uh, for use uh, in the game. It's got multiple deck levels in it. Um, uh, and uh, yes, um, false logic. You can certainly ask questions right there. Um, that is the best place to ask them. In fact, so um, she's she's completed the model. She's completed the uh, STL files, I believe, for the model. And tomorrow, I'm going to be um, I'm going to be uh, uh, getting those from her and uh, hopefully be starting. Um, starting work on, on printing my own version so that I can be able to show you here and hopefully actually use it in the game that we've been uh, playing over at Mythos. It's uh, uh, so I'm I am very very excited about uh, about uh, printing that out. The biggest question, of course, in my mind is uh, what color am I going to start with? Am I going to do it in like a wood brown and then paint uh, paint that? Um, yeah, probably. I'll probably start there. Although I did, uh, uh, I did also, um, download a, uh, uh, I did also download a, um, um, a, an ST, a set of STL files for an absolutely beautiful version of, uh, uh, uh Disney's Nautilus from Disney's 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. Uh, which I always thought was such a, a, a beautiful um, kind of steampunk uh, vision of the Nautilus. So I'll be, uh, uh, however, <laughs> it's funny, when I looked up this particular model uh, online, I thought, oh, that's gorgeous. It's got the interiors, it's all set up for lighting. I mean, it would be a really amazing model. I, I, I really want to do this. And uh, then I looked at the description of the model and it said it was 66 inches long, which I realized after some quick calculation that it was like over six feet long. Um, I mean, this is a pretty hefty model. Um, I I could I'm not sure how I would display it. I I think I said to my um, 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 uh, uh, I, I said to my wife, I could prob probably mount it to the wall like a marlin, I, you know, stuffed marlin. I, no, I, I finally, uh, <laughs> I finally um, uh, uh, realized that it would be easier for me to like, I, you know, reduce it by 50%. And in fact, I had to do that anyway because the model itself, the pieces, the individual pieces of the model, were much bigger than my printer would print anyway. So, um, so I actually managed to get uh, uh, some copper uh, colored PLA that I'm very anxious to try out and see what that looks like uh, on that on that particular model with all of its plates and bolts and and so forth. And Deja Vu said, um, uh, Deja Vu asked. Um, before the airships uh, stopped sailing in Abarax, did the different cultures sail different ships? Um, uh, yes, I believe that they did, although the technology was very much alike. Um, uh, the, uh, the Sylph engine and the, the harp of the Sylph engine um, were very much at the heart of, of all sailing technologies. The shapes of the ships may have been somewhat different. Their sail shapes may have been different. They may have used different uh, rigging configurations. The hulls may have looked somewhat different, but but general in general, the technology of sail, of sail in aeroships 
was consistent in in many different cultures. Um, what happened to the arrow ships? Why did they stop coming? Uh, why have they not returned? Um, and and what has happened to the world beyond the horizon uh, in the last uh, few hundred years is very much at the heart of uh, of the exploration of uh, of the world here. Um, Deja Vu also said that she printed uh, uh, the dragon uh, one of the Dragonborn STL files and that it printed really well in her resin printed printer. I'm a little bit jealous that you've got a resin printer actually. Um, uh, uh, I'll, I'll, although I'm going to have to, I think, overcome uh, a few fears about resin printing before I before I move into into resin printing that, or I don't know, set up a room specifically for it. Um, yes, um, let's see. Oh, uh, False Logic says, uh, with the release of the new novels coming up, will older books be reprinted and re-released? I believe so. Uh, I don't have any control over that, uh, of course, because um, those books, the copyrights on those books, are owned by uh, Wizards of the Coast and Hasbro, and the decision on reprinting those books is very much in their control. However, I think that it, uh, uh, I I'd like to believe that it's in everybody's interest that those books be uh, go into reprint and and re-release, and uh, I would certainly support um, every effort to make that uh, every effort to make that happen. Um, I'll let you know what I hear uh, on that score, um, but uh, and I will ask. So um, uh, I'll check with our publisher, and I'll I'll check with Wizards of the Coast as well, and I can get back to you on that one. Um, Ricky Hall says that uh, uh, says hope they do. My old books are very well loved. Well, I love well loved books. Um, I, uh, um, in fact, um, very often we'll have people come, of course, to the conventions or our appearances and ask us to sign uh, sign their books. And very often they'll come to us. The, you know, broken spines and and uh, bent covers. Then the pages all kind of splayed out a little bit, and and I I love to see those books because to me those books have really lived. Um, a book doesn't re doesn't actually live until it's read, until it's opened, and the words are are read and interpreted by by uh, a reader delving into them. And so, uh, a book that's well loved is a book that has been that has well lived, and uh, can't feel badly about uh, a worn out book. Um, well, and yes, and I would agree, um, Dragon Knight, that the character is very much at the heart of Kren, and very much at our, in our hearts of Kren as well, which is again why one of the reasons I'm so very excited about. Um, getting this uh, new series into your hands. Um, Margaret and I very much wrote this with you in mind. Um, we wanted to, uh, if we were going to return to Kryn, we wanted uh, to, um, to bring you something that was fresh and new, with new characters. And our, our main character is a wonderful character. We're, uh, I could not be more delighted with her uh, and her arc through this through this story um, a, a great uh, a powerful character powerful woman and and uh, who carries uh, whose whose troubled existence carries us through the through this story but at the same time it got it gave us a chance to also bring back uh, really beloved friends and characters uh, um, from the world um, Tasselhoff. Uh, Tasselhoff is very much in the center of the mix of, uh, of things, but but to be able to uh, but to be able to speak those names again and to hear their voices and to see them once again awaken and step onto the stage of Kryn, um, that too was uh, that too was a part of the joy that we had uh, in these books. Um, uh, Ricky says, "I wish they'd consulted you regarding the new RPG. 
I want it to be set after or during the new series. Um, oddly enough, uh, um, when I, uh, when Margaret and I were building this new series, um, it was with uh, uh, it was with uh, RPG in mind. Um, um, but you know, uh, woulda, coulda, shoulda. Um, uh, we all have our wishes, and uh, this is uh, this is where we're at. Um, I personally think that the setting of these books is uh, such an exciting one, and offers such amazing potential in terms of gameplay that I'm hoping that you will actually take those and and, and create gameplay from them. Um, Yeah, Byron says, setting up a room for tech like a resin printer reminds me when Judges Guild uh, under Bexerwatt got their first mainframe computer in the very early 80s. <laughs> they needed a very clean room. That's true. I can actually, their, their mainframe, it's true. Um, I, uh, um, I, uh, <laughs> um, I, I don't know. As, as I've looked at, as I've looked at resident prisoners, and kind of the things that uh, uh, that were required to, you know, to you have to keep them in a dark. Uh, you need to keep them in a place where there's no direct sunlight because that affects the the goo that 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 the resident printers uh, use to create the modeling. Um, uh, you have to be careful of the stuff itself. It's uh, because it's a little bit on the toxic side. Um, you know, so you have to handle it with uh, handle it with uh, latex gloves, and and you have to be careful in in in, in working with it. And the more I I looked at it, I I just you know was I I in the back of my head I could just see Breaking Bad, but that's not that's not right. So um, I I just think that I needed a a place to. <laughs> yeah, Deja says she uses a ton of gloves. Uh, so I think I just need a, a place to make that work because I, I, I would very much, very much enjoy uh, 3D printing and, and you know, I, I used to like, um, I, I still do. I enjoy painting miniatures and I love miniatures, um, and and the idea that I can actually make some, uh, make my own, uh, is hugely, uh, hugely appealing to me. Um, oh, excuse me. Uh, I've also reached that stage where allergies uh, uh, creep up on me quite a bit. Oh, so anyway, that's... Uh, <laughs> yes, it's... Yes, uh, I even know about Breaking Bad is something of a... is... is, is uh, uh, an interesting fact, I suppose. Um, yeah, I uh, actually once uh, my son was very much my son Curtis was very much into Breaking Bad for uh, at a time and and we visited when we visited um, the Sony lot when we were working on uh, Ghostbusters um, VR destination VR um, my son and I were were there on the lot Curtis and I were there on the lot and one of the things that he 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 stopped and he was so astonished and he pointed over there and he was pointing at this really trashed out Winnebago and I thought why are you so interested in that and he said oh that's from Baking Bad and he had to go over and get his picture taken in front of it I said okay um so it looks like my allergies have in fact taken hold of me um and thank you all for coming this evening. I'm sorry, like I said, that we're not uh, playing a game tonight, but hopefully by next week we will be able to do so. Um, uh, I am looking into the idea, actually, of streaming that big uh, event in, at Gen Con so that all of us could enjoy it. Um, and we'll see how successful I am with that right here on uh, on our uh, this bat channel, as we used to say. Um, uh, excuse me, heavens. Water leveled. Hi, yes, everyone as well. I'm glad to see you here. And thank you, Ed. Yes, I can't wait to see everybody in August as well. And uh, 
life does indeed happen and we uh, <laughs> or as uh as i think we often used to say um the uh the first casualty in any engagement is the plan so we just roll with it and do the best we can i'm very grateful to everybody coming to visit us here this evening and uh and hopefully we'll be able to take a look at that uh, arrow ship uh, very soon. I'll get that printed up as much as we can. Uh, thank you. Uh, and thank you all for your kind words and thoughts. Um, um, uh, recently life has been a little bit difficult uh, for us here personally. But, but at the same time, um, it means a lot to have you here with us uh, and joining us. So, so thank you, everybody. And uh, we will uh, hopefully see you again here next week. In the meantime, I think my wife is waiting for me to join her in Stardew Valley, which is uh, our current uh, obsession here um, at the house. And we'll probably talk about that next time. Anyway, again, thank you all for coming here. Publish peace. And we, we will see you again next week. Good night for now.